Hello, my name is Richard Kent. Uh, today I'd like to talk about how we actually speak. Now, humans are different from animals. Um, they make funny noises to each other, but we actually communicate via speech. There are other ways we communicate, but one of the prime ways we actually communicate is via our speech. And speech is one of the most complicated things that we do. It is so intricate and so complicated, um, I doubt it would be possible to actually get a, a machine to replicate exactly what the human body does as we speak. Um, let me explain, first of all, what sound is. Basically, sound is airwaves moving uh, backwards and forwards. Um, the sound waves move, cause the air to move backwards and forwards with different frequencies and different a amplitudes. Now, first of all, frequencies. Um, if I speak with a very high voice, I've got a high frequency sound. And if I speak with a very low voice, I've got a low frequency sound. I can also actually, all of us can, have different amplitudes to our voice. If I were to speak loud, more loud, um, there is more amplitude. And if I was to speak very quietly, there's less amplitude. Um, and we actually can um, change the frequency and the amplitude of our voice a lot. Now, actually, what comes out of all our mouths isn't just one frequency and one amplitude, but a whole variety of different uh, sounds with different frequencies and different amplitudes. And it all starts with our vocal cords. Now, our vocal cords are very, very cleverly designed so that they actually vibrate. Uh, they have two little cartilages which keep them taut, and they vibrate as air passes through them. Um, so the human body, the brain, our central processing system, um, uh, computes how much air to pass through the vocal cords and then how tight to pull the vocal cords. Um, sounds are produced according to how much air is going through the vocal cords and how much sound is coming from uh, and, and how much uh, how tight the vocal cords are. Now that's not the end of it, that's just the beginning of it because we also have a mouth, a tongue, teeth and lips and they make a very, very important contribution to the sounds that we make. Starting with our lips, we have a huge number of muscles around our lips. And when we say a p or uh, a p or a t or a s, um, we're using our teeth and our tongues and our mouth and our lips to, to make all these different sounds. Now, typically it takes a child up to about uh, year, 10 years old before they can speak properly, um, sometimes 12. But not usually, they can't, a child can't normally speak very well until they're about 10 years old because it is actually very, very complicated. Um, now, another thing that the, uh, we all do, whether we're speaking or whether we're singing, I can't, I'm a useless singer, but if we are, for opera singers and people like that, is to learn how to um, make uh, this, the air pass through our vocal cords at a constant speed. Now, you may think that's quite a small thing to do, but it actually is a very complicated thing to do. And I'll tell you why, because we also have to breathe and take in oxygen at the same time and also breathe out carbon dioxide. So, if you watch anybody speaking, you'll find that they pause every now and again to take a breath and take in oxygen and they, and they breathe out whilst they're speaking or singing, uh, but at a constant velocity of uh, a constant velocity of the air going past the uh, the larynx. This requires, I mean, opera tra opera opera training. I'm not an opera singer, but requires an enormous amount of training to be able to to keep a, a note for a long time. The whole thing is unbelievably complex, and to think that this evolved is absolutely ridiculous. It's the biggest lie that was ever invented. This evolution should be called evolution. No, God created Adam and Eve to speak and speak to him, and we still can hear what God says. Thank you for listening, and God bless you.